The role of heating zones in the extruder is extremely important. As we know, there are different types of extruders, such as single screw extruders or co-rotating and counter-rotating twin screw extruders. And for each of these, the number of heating zones varies. Heating zones themselves are also divided into different regions. We have the feed zone, we have the compression zone, there is the metering zone and the dye zone. The temperature settings within each of these distinct zones are incredibly and critically important. If you do not meticulously set these specific temperatures correctly and with utmost precision, your valuable material might unfortunately burn or it might melt much more rapidly and significantly faster than it should, potentially leading to undesirable outcomes and material waste. There might be bubbles forming in your material or it might not melt completely and other problems that are not just dependent on the type of your polymer. As I mentioned in the previous video, it also depends a lot on your additives. After it's determined exactly what type of additive with what specifications you're using and what type of polymer you're working with, it's necessary for an expert to precisely tell you the exact temperature of these zones so that you can actually produce a very high quality product. Let me also mention that there isn't a single universal formula for this. For example, your extruder might be a co-rotating twin screw type, but today you're using a specific type of polymer. Tomorrow you might change the type of polymer you're using. All of these temperatures will have to be adjusted again. Even if you make a very, very slight change to the additive, all the temperatures need to be reset again. Simply adjusting the temperature and producing a good granule still doesn't mean you're getting a good result. In fact, the temperatures need to be optimized. That means you should be able to produce granules with minimal energy consumption, without putting strain on your machine, and without having to cool down your system multiple times. Well, this is a very sensitive area that seems very simple to everyone, but that's not actually the case. Even though the factory that sold you the extruder or the company providing you with the formula has given you the temperature settings and heating zones, you still need to adjust and review these settings specifically for your own factory and your own product. We have diligently tried to include all the small but truly necessary points on this particular topic within our comprehensive training course specifically designed for you. However, if after thoroughly watching this course, you still genuinely feel that our experience could be incredibly helpful to you, we would be exceptionally happy to hear from you. I wish you all success. Have a nice day.